This is episode 24 of the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. I'm Carly Cade, and today I have April Hardiman on the show with me. April is a businesswoman that has lived as a military wife in Germany for the last three years. Wanting a job in the horse industry, April started Make It Rain, a consulting company helping equine businesses negotiate the quagmire of online technology. In today's podcast, April offers marketing advice to equine authors and helps with ways to grow their book business. Now, let's get into the interview. Welcome to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast, a podcast featuring interviews with equestrian authors who love all things horses and writing about them. In each episode, you'll hear inspirational stories from horse book authors, including writing advice, and marketing tips to help you write your very own horse book. If you're an author, aspire to be an author, or simply love horse books, then you are in the right place. I'm your host, Carly Cade, and creative writing makes my spurs jingle. Hi everyone, welcome to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Show, and today I am so excited to have April Hardiman on the show. Hi April! Hi Carly, thanks for having me. Of course. I always love interviewing uh, fellow people that are up to big things and other entrepreneurs, and you are definitely one of those. I am really excited for this interview because I think that you're going to provide a lot of insightful information for authors on how they can grow their business and even um, provide resources on how they can do that even better. So we'll get to that part in the informational subject of the interview because I always like to start off the show with asking people how they fell in love with horses. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So my love for horses started at a really young age. I was fortunate enough for my mom to be into horses. So she got a horse when I was five. I kind of started lessons around seven or 10 and then kind of just grew from there. And then I got my first horse for Christmas when I was 14. It was funny because we were in New York and my mom handed me this book on how to train horses. And I was like, how am I going to use this? And she said, well, you're going to use that for your new horse that you have. So and that's oh, kind of yeah. how that started. And that was a big paint horse. So I always love seeing your pictures of your paint because that was my first love is just always paint horses. Yeah, I have an affinity for the, for the color breeds for sure. And what a special gift, a Christmas horse. That's like yeah. every little girl's dream. So you were in yeah. New York on vacation and was the- Yeah, we were visiting home? family and, um, and she just gave me this book and everything. I was just like bawling. My dad's taking all these pictures. And I was like, I want to go see him. Can we just go home now? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And then, so tell me, like, where was your horse when you finally got to, to see him? Where, how did that go? Um, so first time it was just because um, we had moved away from that barn. And so when we went back to visit um, and it was just so crazy because he was just out there in the front of the pasture. And it was just so hard to believe that he was mine. He was like a three-year-old horse and I'm only 14. So it was like not the best mix, but it was probably the best learning experience because I learned how to start a young horse. And that ends up being like my passion now is to work with the babies. And- so, yeah. So it's, it's so funny. Like often people think, uh, you know, to, to purchase a young horse for their young person so they can grow up together. But often it's, uh, a little crazy when you have a young horse and a young person. So <laughs> I, at my fam, my parents did the same for me. I, when I was 10 years old on my birthday, I got my first horse was a Palomino Missy. Oh. And she was a four year old. So we had a barely broke four year old in a, in a learning family. So that, that provided a lot of very interesting moments, but yeah. you do learn. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and the bond does grow strong when, when you're yeah. young. Oh often, yeah. Oh yeah. Often looking for a little bit of an older horse for a young person sometimes is is a better route to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luckily I had uh, we had a trainer that helped a lot, but um there was definitely some falls and <laughs> lots of learning experiences and we still went through our like he it was easy to break them, but it was then like now I have to learn the ground manners when we should have gone the other way around. And mm-hmm. but now I know and it's now I have all those lessons to carry me through with other horses. So Absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, so you also have a horse currently. Tell us about your, your current furry friend, the love of your life. Yes. Yeah, so the horse I have currently, his name is Brenna's Dixie King. Uh, we just call him King. He's a nine-year-old pink gelding, so you got to wow. keep the pink. <laughs> and I was there the day he was born, and I always rubbed the mayor's belly. I was like, please have a flashy paint, because my other paint was just like one little white spot. 
and he was super flashy when he hit the ground the owner called me and said guess what we have on the ground right now a flashy paint so I ran I had college classes but I ran over to the barn real quick to go see him and then went to go take do all my classes and then a few months later he was mine Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. So she delivered. Your your prayers were delivered yes. when you rubbed her mm. belly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. I was like, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Even though I didn't know he was going to be mine. It was just, I love the mare and I love the stallion. And then my horse, um, Money, the one I had got, that's what his name is, Money, for Christmas had actually passed away. And she said, you've been working so hard on this horse for King that he can be yours. So he was kind oh. of a gift. Me. yeah lovely so was it was like meant yeah. to be and it, it's always difficult when when their older horses do pass away and and dealing with like finding another heart horse that's always very challenging and for oh, yeah. people listening in I will make sure to share pictures of April's beautiful horse <laughs> king in the yes. show notes so you can definitely check that out so you can see her flashy paint uh, yes. I'm a fan <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm so glad you're on the show today because this interview is going to be a little bit different. Um, April is actually not an author, but what's so cool about April is that she's in the business of helping others help their equine businesses run more smoothly as a virtual assistant, which is really cool because I, you know, I know uh, there's a, a lot to undertake as an author in our journey and sometimes we need help. And April's the type of person that, that you can reach out to for help. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about her business and what a virtual assistant does and how your services can benefit authors who are feeling a little overwhelmed. So, so start with telling us about your business and we'll, we'll run from there. Yeah, sounds great. So I own Make It Rain, which I just love that name, and <laughs> where I help equine businesses gain exposure online. So that could be through SEO, social media marketing, um, you know, just creating the content for social media because it can be very overwhelming. Um, I do some video editing and email marketing. Mm -hmm. Recently, I've been really working on um, doing courses and memberships and just pretty much all the techie stuff. I like to say I'm a very tech savvy equestrian. So whatever you need to work on, I can help pretty much. Um, sometimes you see VAs, they do admin work and um, maybe even just clean out your email. But usually I kind of dive in a little further and do all the just the deep stuff that some people don't even want to figure out because all these automations and with convert kit your email or um, maybe you have click funnels over here and you're doing all these funnels so it can seem really scary and that's usually what I find enjoyable is doing all that and just figuring it out so well, that's great you can take things off of people's plates that are just feel like overwhelming and and help them build the tools to bring mm -hmm. bring bring people into their businesses and they don't have to worry about it because you take care of it for them right so yes. Yes. so basically a virtual a virtual assistant is sort of a jack of all trades right so people would, would reach out to you and say uh you know you would have I, I imagine and i already looked at your site you have um an opportunity for people to actually talk with you and mm -hmm. do do kind of a download of what their needs are can you talk a little bit about what that looks like how people initially engage with you so i have a page called work with me on my website and it's just a 30 minute free consultation that we can work on to see if what go your goals are for social media or if you have any goals on getting more people on your email list or if you just need to wherever you need to start like you just like i know i need to be online where do i start what do we need to do and pretty much i can help work through all of that because i'm just so experienced with everything that's going on with online and, stuff. And, <laughs> yeah and that's that's really awesome because a part part of i think some authors experience is they they really just want to write the books they don't want to have to be responsible for for the marketing and in the building of the websites and and all of that but actually no matter which route you choose, traditional publishing or independent publishing, now it's almost an expectation that authors do their own marketing. So it's awesome to hear that there's a solution for people by using a virtual assistant like yourself uh, to, to do some of those marketing tasks that maybe they don't have experience doing or they just don't want to bother with so they can get to the business of writing. So, so this is a great solution for authors. Mm -hmm. And it's great to have a, like a VA that's kind of like contract work and it's not where you're having to hire a person by like hourly and you hope that you know what they're working on. Instead, if it's contract work, you're telling them exactly what you want and mm -hmm. straight to the point and you don't have to worry about any of their overhead costs that they're doing um, with all their systems or softwares or 
any of the ways they're re researching how to make sure that they're promoting you to the best of their ability. Hmm, that, that's really cool. And then so <clears throat> tell us how you decided to to start Make It Rain and, and get into the business of assisting others. Like, did, did you go to, to school for this sort of thing? Or, um, <laughs> you know, starting a business is a, a big undertaking. And you're doing it very well. I, I think people would love to hear, you know, why you decided to take this on and help people out. Yeah, so I originally went to college to get my accounting degree because I thought I was going to be a bookkeeper for the equine industry. I knew I wanted to be in the equine industry and helping business owners in any way possible. Um, so, but I knew I was really tech savvy and I actually started to reach out to a lot of equine uh, business owners and I was like, do you have any tips? Do you have any recommendations? And someone actually responded and it was Mary Phelps, uh, owner of Horses Daily. And um, she said, come down to Florida and I need an assistant to work on my website. And pretty much I had a lot of the skills already just playing around on social media and such. And I pretty much imp implemented all those ideas into her business. And then I just really loved it. But then I thought, you know, I just got my degree. Now I need to go have a big girl job. And so I went into corporate for a few years and then I was like, no, nope, this isn't what's making me happy. So then I made it possible to have this as a full-time thing and I came back into it, which was perfect timing because we had moved to Germany and it's so hard to get a job here. <laughs> so really why? Well, and, and, and you, you are part of a military family, correct? And that's yeah. why you moved mm -hmm. to Germany. Well, th and thank you for your service. So, so Germany is difficult to get a job. I mean, how cool is it that you can just work from home helping clients anywhere in the world and you yeah. built this all yourself as a business. I'm, I'm, I'm curious why, why Germany? And then why is it hard? I'm just, um, well in Germany to work off post, you have to uh, pass a certain uh, level for language. Uh, they have like the ABC levels for how well you can speak German to work off post. Um, I had started to take classes and then uh, I kind of just got sidetracked <laughs> and then um, to work on post is just so many spouses trying to get the same job and you just have to wait for them to either PCS or move as we say PCS um, but it's just and then it's just not the jobs that you maybe you're interested in like I was a building monitor for a little bit for a, a school pretty much all I did was lock the doors um, and that's kind of how this even started too, is like I was a building monitor. I, all I had to do was sit in the class or outside the class, make sure no one was stealing anything and just lock the doors at night. And I could, I was allowed to be on my computer and do whatever. So I was starting this at the same time as working there. So. Hey, that's great. I mean, making use of, of your time and, and then, you know, taking an opportunity when yeah. you know, there wasn't anything for you or that inspired you to build something. I mean, I, I find that so inspiring and, and good on you for taking the reins, right? You're making yes. it rain. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so, so again, you basically, you're a jack of all trades and, you know, I, I can imagine that you're doing a lot of work for a lot of different types of equestrian businesses and you know so how do you you know how many clients do you work with at, at a time and and how do you manage you know learning about them and then working with all these different clients like how, how does that process work for you yeah so it, that was a learning experience too with having so many different clients um, right now I have about five to ten and it kind of varies depending on if they're just you know quick little projects here and there that might just take like a month or two, or it might be a long-term client. Um, so it all really depends. And then I use a lot of online systems to help me keep track of it. A lot of it is like uh, Trello, which is a, um, just a task organizer. There's also Asana and ClickUps that are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And I have all my tasks and then I show, each client has their own list and they can see what I'm working on and that, when the due date is for that. So it keeps them, in track of what I'm doing and then I know what's going on <laughs> and then I also like block out my time especially with having my daughter so it's like trying to block out my time with her at the babysitters and everything else going on because I've got to work on my business as well as working on my clients business so it's it's a task but I really enjoy what I'm doing so it's worth it <laughs> and I, I couldn't agree with you more like when when you love what you're working on and who you're working for and the work you're doing and it gives you space to to be with your daughter and you know have a family life and do the things that you love it doesn't feel like work i mean we you probably work more than the average you know nine to five job i i assume but but it yeah. but when you're working on a passion 
and you're seeing results, like that is inspiring to keep going, right? Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And then your clients, do you show them the hours you block so they know how much time you're spending on each pro project or you just decide on the, the hours? I just usually give um, them a due date and when I'm going to have that task done by or they'll give me a date they need that task done by and I just um, get it completed by then pretty much and okay. usually sometimes I'll even have my physical planner where I'm like okay this is what I need to work on too today um, and I'll prioritize it but usually Trello is really great at just helping me make sure I know what tasks to complete. Um, there's also some like CRMs or customer relationship management, like Dubsado and some other ones that will keep track of all of my clients and then mm. keep track of like invoices and I can keep track of time, how much time I've spent on them if I have hourly packages. So <clears throat> and actually Trello is an awesome tool. I'll make sure to link to that in the show notes so people can go check that out. Uh, and then, and so you you have you you charge hourly for for your work but you bundle those so it's like a a per a per project package that that you offer to your clients is, is yeah that? i have the uh, hourly packages um and a lot of times i work with the client to see like what they need sometimes it's just based off the project um and then we go from there i have you know a, a basis on my website because i know a lot of people like to see prices um, before they make a decision before they even reach out to you mm -hmm. so i try to have some prices up there but a lot of times they contact me and say hey this is what i'm trying to work on and then i kind of work on something and then i send them um send them a proposal mm -hmm. and then we go from there i even have some clients that i have me on retainer mm. so i work so many hours and then for some reason if i don't work as many as i thought i was going to that month they just roll over to the next month so Oh, that's cool. So there's a lot of options for people, no matter, you know, depending on no matter what the budget is, there's an option, there's an opportunity to work with you and, and work. Mm -hmm. with you. That's, mm -hmm. that's super cool. Um, and then, you know, this is also an interesting question too. Like, how do you reach your clients? How do you, um, do you do any active outreach or how does it work for clients to come to you? Yes. So I've been super fortunate that a majority of my clients have actually found me. I don't know if it's just because I've been using my own tactics to get help reach out to clients. Like uh, my first client came to me through a blog post. Oh, um, it was my very first blog post that I posted saying, Hey, I'm going to start this business and this is all my experience. And like, uh, not even a week later, I got an email saying, I'm really interested in working with you. And she's still a client today. So I guess it worked out really well. And um, I go on Facebook groups and I just help answer a lot of questions and then they kind of discover that's what I do and then <laughs> go from there. That's great. So, so clearly you know what you're doing and your tactics work because it's bringing clients to you and thus you use that to help your clients generate clients. So, so you're doing, you're doing the right thing. That's, that's great. And you're a member of um, the American Horse Publications Organization. We met each other this year at, or I'm sorry, in 2019 at their conference. So, and that's a great place to network and tell people mm -hmm. about what you're doing. And um, that was your first year, your first year there too. Yes. And yes, I got the briar. I'm looking at him right now. So. <laughs> so jealous, so jealous. You won the briar. So every year at the American Horse Publications Conference, there's uh, at the awards reception, there's a big dinner, and they're in briars. So awesome. They donate um, briar horse models to each table, and then we have like a lottery ticket grab, and and they and they uh, call out the winner at the table and then one lucky person gets to go home with like these special edition briar horses, which is so cool. I actually got one too, my first year, my first year. I think there's something magic about the first year. Yeah. And, uh, mine was perfect. I had a Western saddle. <laughs> so I was like, all excited. Uh, yeah. And you know, and so, and so that's, that's a great way to network too, is being a member of an organization. Do you, do you network in any others or is American Horse Publications your kind of go-to? So yeah, as soon as I saw uh, American Horse Publications, I was like, I have to go to that one. I was happened to be home. So I was like, I'm going and I'm joining. Um, and it was one of the best experiences. I'm so happy to meet you and so many others. And I actually walked away with a couple of clients, like project-based clients. So that was it really it worked out really well and then um and one that i really wanted to go to last year was the equestrian business women summit and they're going to have panels where they might like last year i think they talked about how to be a social media influencer oh, cool. um, and they even had like a digital ticket afterwards and that's what i purchased last year mm -hmm. and um it, just to learn about all the things they talked about and all the open key speakers they had and such don't forget as an author of books you are running a business so this would be applicable and i really like that this is this is for women you know a conference for women in the in the 
equine industry. It doesn't get any better than that. You just recently uh, started up a podcast as well, which is cool. <laughs> and it's called um, Rain in Your Herd. And you have a co-host. So can you talk to us a little bit about the Rain in the Herd podcast, uh, who your co-host is, and what listeners can discover when they, when they come listen in on your show? Yeah, so Laura Langfit is my co-host. She has um, unbridled content marketing as her business. Um, she's also known as the Ward Wrangler because she's really great with words. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> read any of her emails. Like she's just so creative, and they just she's just going to spit them out really quickly. Mm -hmm. But we are both really passionate about helping the equine businesses or bloggers, authors, anyone really grow their audience online. So that's why we call it Rain in Your Herd. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we just want to give those owners the knowledge they need to move forward online and share how other businesses have grown. So sometimes we have guests come on and they've uh, talked about what has worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. And sometimes they even ask us like, what do you, now that you know about my business, what do you recommend? How should I move forward? So then we kind of give them tips too. So oh, cool. Kind of like, I love that. Yeah. So we just, <laughs> and a lot of times we just have fun on it because we're still learning all about it. Um, we're on our 13th episode. Um, our next one should be coming out shortly. So, but yeah, we, ours come out twice a month, uh, the first Friday and the third Friday. Um, and sometimes we have really techie talks, but we keep those short because I know it can be a little overwhelming. And usually those <laughs> are mine. We talk like Google analytics or just anything with analytics or anything that you need to know, but we keep it pretty quick. And then, uh, Lauren, we have had topics on like storytelling for your content or how to nail your brand. And, um, so yeah, it's just been a lot of fun. Yeah. I've listened to your episodes and, and they are fun and you, you, you're both up to like really great things. Like uh, both your websites are very strong. And I hear what you say about her being a, a word wrangler. I was looking at some of her, her package wording and it's, it's really cool oh, yeah. and, and very oh, yeah, cool. She, and, inspires and, me to be more creative with my stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and but that's what this is all about, right? It's about uniting and partnerships and women supporting mm -hmm. women and learning from each other. And like, that's what your podcast is about. That's what this podcast is about. It's about us all coming together and supporting each other and helping our businesses grow because we can all always be learning more, right? And right. that's exactly what you're doing. I mean, what a wonderful gift that you're giving to and not just authors, but anybody who is, you know, struggling with growing their business in the, in the digital realm, like this podcast is like this wonderful free resource where people can go and listen and, and discover tips and then, you know, put their thinking caps on, but then also consider working with you. So it's like a fabulous way to educate people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then, yeah. yeah, we know there's just so much and it can be so easily be overwhelmed. And a lot of times we're just like, just be yourself and just start, even if it's messy, just start. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, that is the thing, baby steps, right? One step at a right. time, just go slow. And that, that's also what I people, tell people when they come on the podcast. I mean, it's just two people chatting about the coolest things on earth, horses and writing about them and, you know, growing our businesses. So, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, so I will make sure to link to your podcast in the show notes so people can go and have a listen to that as well. Um, I know I'm listening because I'm learning a whole bunch. Oh, thank of you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, and then also sort of on this topic of, of marketing and different things that you're doing, you also do a lot of fun uh, YouTube videos and, um, and you do challenges. Can you, can you tell us about your YouTube channel and how you develop your content and what your challenges are like? Yeah, so I kind of get a little nerdy on it and I go and research a lot of topics that people are searching for. So I do my whole SEO with my keywords and search and see smart. what the equine in, sorry? I just said smart. <laughs> <laughs> so I do a lot of the things that I know the equine industry is really looking for. So, um, and then, you know, I know all this information that's out there, but sometimes you just don't know how to apply it to your business, to your books. Like how is it relevant to the equine industry? So I like to turn it around and, you know, promote it as, okay, this is what you could do with your business. A lot of times, like I did one on blog topics. And mm -hmm. so I gave even the small businesses, how they can create blog posts on um, what feature the horse of the month or the rider of the month, something that will just help your, your website reach further. And just something to talk about. Everybody is interested in what's going on at your barn. And they want to know how it's, good, it's running. So even when they think about boarding at your barn, maybe they like that you have that personality. So it's just all these little fun things that I try to relate back to them. Um, with the challenges, I've just kind of helped um, 
you know, people get started with YouTube and such, and I'm having more of that come out too. Um, I had to stop for a little bit with YouTube for a little bit because of my MBA <laughs> process, but now that that's done, I can get back on it. And like, cause I really enjoyed doing the YouTube. And, um, so I like, that was like our next process for our podcast, like yours is to put it on YouTube. Cause I think that's a great place for equine businesses to be. And just video is just constantly still growing. Like it's going to consistently be there. So, mm -hmm. and even in the future, you know, if someone's looking up that stuff, they're still going to, your videos are still going to be up on the website and they're still going to be able to refer back to them. And maybe if you had affiliate links in it or such, you're still growing and still earning money off of that. If mm -hmm. that's what you're trying to do with YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, you're such a busy woman. I'm like, I'm so impressed by what you do. I mean, you, you run your own business, you have a podcast, you do these YouTube channels, you constantly are putting awesome blog content out there. Uh, you're attending conferences, you're reading books, you're reading my books. And, and yes. I don't know how you, and you have an MBA. I don't, I don't know. You have a child. I don't know how, how you find like, I, I, it. It's a crazy year. I just, but women are incredible. I'm not saying men are not incredible, but the things that women can take on in addition to being mothers and, and you own a horse. Oh my goodness. So like you, you know, so good, good for you. I mean, you're out there making it rain and making it happen. And I am like, I'm so proud of you. And, and I love learning from you. I also wanted to talk to you too. I just joined your, um, Facebook group, your, your mm -hmm. private Facebook group. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you do there and what you offer there? Now, this is another cool resource that you're offering to, to people so where they can learn. Yes. Yeah, so I have a Facebook group called grow your herd and, um, it's just all about, you know, a community memberships and connection. Cause that's what I'm big on. I've read a lot of Brene Brown and she oh, talks so her. much about how we biologically need connection mm -hmm. and, um, so I wanted to kind of relate that to horses and their herds and how they need each other as connections. So um, that's why I named it that way. And then um, since I am niching a little bit more into courses and memberships, that's kind of why I did that. But I'm also just providing a lot of information on, you know, getting that exposure. And then I'm even doing like, um, like a five day content camp and those videos will be always up there. And cause I know so many people get overwhelmed with how do you, you know, get all this content out. And it's like, but there's some secrets there. And that's what I'm going to be kind of giving out is like, you know, it's important to content batch. And you're like, but how do I start doing that? And so, you know, I'm going to help map that out. So those kind of things. And then I go in there weekly and do just a live video to give some tips. And then I also have a fun co-working hour, which um, my first one was a couple weeks ago and there's only a couple of us, but it was really, it went really well. And they're like, do this again. So now I'm doing it once a month, so I'm really excited. Cool. And tell us about the co co-working hour. How do people get involved, and and what do you what do you do in the co-working hour? That sounds like a really neat resource. <laughs> so since so much of what we're doing is remote, and like we don't go to an office, if you know if all you're doing is doing this, and you don't have really many people to talk to, mm -hmm. so I'm just like, come join us for an hour. It's just on a Zoom video. Um, you all you're doing is working on your business. I say no client work, so you're supposed to be you know busy with your business. And we just, uh, sometimes what we did was just kind of give each other tips like, hey, are you doing this on Pinterest? Like, what did you do for here? And so just little quick tips or like, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? Or um, even while some other people were talking, some were actually still working. So it worked out really well. It's just kind of like what you would do at a corporate office is like maybe you're meeting for a second and then you have like, did you work on that email or, you know, just something like that. So it's, it's just, it's just an hour once a month and it's just a good way for all of us to connect and um, like grow your herd. So that's what I'm like is just have us all herd members together and talking. That is so neat. Oh, and awesome. I, you know, that it, it's like, that is a really cool thing that you're doing. I, you know, I love that you mentioned Bren Brene Brown. She's a fantastic author and I love, I've read most of her books. Her She's books. really great. Mm -hmm. um, but, but this, this, what I've noticed in my author career is like, you know, I tend to be, I seem extroverted, but I tend to be pretty introverted and I like to kind of huddle down and do my work behind the computer. And, mm -hmm. and, and I don't pop my head out, I think often enough, because when I do go to conferences or I do participate in, you know, book signing or I go to an event or even like what you were saying, like doing these zoom calls is like really great, you know, cause you get out and you're talking to people. And I think, um, a re the resource like that where we're, you know, rather than just huddling down and being in our little caves, we have an opportunity to be social with our work. I think that is such a cool 
idea and I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of it. So thank you for, for making that available for people. Yes. Yes. I uh, was so excited to do it because I was like, this would be a great way to just talk and connect <laughs> instead of being lonely. <laughs> for sure. I think that is so great. Uh, and then let's, let's talk a little bit about course building. So talk to us a little bit about why you're moving into course building. And then it, it sounds like you're going to offer these courses through the Facebook group. Is, is that what you're planning? Yeah. So yeah, I'll have a couple of courses on the Facebook group. Um, eventually I'll have some that are like paid groups. Like if I do, um, cause I'm thinking of doing Facebook ads cause a lot of people want to know how that works cause it's super overwhelming and mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be. So mm -hmm. I was going to break that down. So one of the reasons why I started doing courses and memberships is I was really passionate about getting um, trainers work out there. So there's a lot of trainers that we all love and we want to learn from them, but they're like in crazy states far away from us, or maybe they're even in Canada or maybe in a different country completely. So I was like, how can we have that where, you know, anybody can get to them. So I've been working on a, with a lot of trainers on getting their membership websites out completely and uh, people have been loving that because now they can work with their favorite trainer or I like to say it's like the dream man and you're just learning from different trainers so mm -hmm. now you have the great opportunity of just getting on your computer and working uh, with multiple trainers and learning different techniques because not every horse is the same and they all have their own personality so sometimes you have to approach things differently and if you just have a complete you know, mind block, like, what am I supposed to do? And then you find a different trainer, like, hey, that might work. And then you can sign up with them. So that's what I've been really working with trainers on. And that's how I kind of got with membership in the courses. And then I'll have some of my own courses with like how to, you know, help you grow your own business and such with like Facebook ads. And now that, you know, there's so much funnels going on with all these landing pages and click funnels and all that. And it just seems like there's so much going on. So I'm here to help like walk you through it and help you learn it and how you can apply it to your equine business. Cause there's so many out there and you're like, how am I going to apply this to what I'm doing right now? So yeah. And, and there's so many different things that you can apply and what, which is great because that pr you provide sort of a coaching framework with then people can then decide, you know, they can either come to you with what they want to do or they can work with you to decide what to do. So that that's really, really cool. And then course building, is that something you're going to be offering services on where you would, I mean, you're helping trainers obviously, but mm -hmm. an author, could they come to you and say, I want to build a course around, you know, writing a book in 30 mm -hmm. days. They could yeah. come to you and you could help them with that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what I actually did with one of my clients. And um, she used a system similar to ClickFunnels, which is called Simplero. And we just um, got all her content out there. She had, she was very similar with the program. So she had a lot of it out there, but yeah, you know, I'm very familiar with lots of course platforms from like Teachable, Kajabi, Thinkify, or even WordPress plugins. Like I'm able to do that too. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. So of any of the course building uh, content hosting sites that are out there. What, what, what's your favorite, you know, if you so were right now, them. my favorite, um, if you want a lot of like gamification where they can either earn a little badges or do quizzes and stuff like that, if you want all that and you want to be able to customize everything, then I really like, uh, the WordPress, uh, WordPress plugin access ally. Mm. Uh, it is sometimes a little more expensive, but you're going to get all the perks and the way it keeps track of everybody is, excellent but if you're just kind of starting out and you just want to get your feet wet with what's going on um my other two favorite are teachable and kajabi for that um some people want to have all of their stuff in the same spot so that's what like you see with click funnels like you your emails your lists your landing pages everything is in one spot sometimes that scares people because if your server goes down then you have no contact with any of that so it just you have to kind of do your pros and cons but I love access ally cool thank you for that insight on courses I know courses are sort of um bubbling or you know they're already huge but they're you yeah. know it's like even even bubbling up a little even more and there's so much great information and great teachers out there and what's cool about courses is you can choose the personality of the person teaching the course that suits you right mm -hmm. you know it's because not everybody is for everybody, you know, so there's a lot of options and, and that's yeah. great. Everyone gets yeah. overwhelmed that what they're doing, someone else is already doing what I'm doing, but the way you say it may speak to somebody completely different. Even if they're doing something very similar to what you're doing, it might finally like, oh my gosh, I get it now. Thanks for telling me that, even though they might've heard it from someone else. 
Yeah, that that is such great feedback. And, you know, this, this is funny. It's like, you know, you work with a lot of businesses and, you know, authors are a business and, you know, what would you say to a, a client that comes to you that says, I keep doing this and doing this and doing this. And I feel like nobody is, is listening to me. Why should I keep going? What would you say to that person? <laughs> so a lot of times I would kind of see what they're offering. And a lot of times um, I would maybe see what, how large their audience is. So um, that's the biggest thing is how large is your audience and, how are you reaching out to them? How are you marketing? Like, are you saying, is this course, are you giving them the answer and what you're saying the course is for? Or are you saying you might work through this? Are you even telling them what results they're getting from the course? They want to know what the results are, what the step through process is, and every little bit of that course. So it just has to, you have to kind of analyze what's going on with the course to see what's really going on in the background. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're an expert at copywriting, right? And, and, and how you're writing and proposing things mm -hmm. has a lot to do with it as well. Social media uh, is a big piece of that. Like, you know, like I always, you know, for authors, it's like, you can't just blast a cover of your book over and over and over again and ask people to buy it. People want to know you, right? So I, you help people build their personas mm -hmm. and their brands and help them with the actual writing of these things, which is mm -hmm. yeah, so cool. Yeah. And, you know, we've just talked about so much. You're up to so much and you're doing so much. What would you tell yourself or what do you wish you had known when you had started out on, on this adventure of being an, an entrepreneur and having your own, own business? What would you tell your previous self? <laughs> yeah, so I started out, my business name was Dream Virtual Assistant. And because I was getting into the business and I was like, I don't know who's going to hire me. I don't think enough equine businesses are going to need me. And then I was completely wrong and I changed it to make it rain, which is so much more suitable to my audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, then, so my biggest lesson was just like, I need to niche down because the riches are in the niches is what some people like to say. <laughs> so I just kept niching down. And I, as I'm going through this process, I'm learning that the more I niche down, the more I'm able to help people. Um, so that was the biggest learning curve for me. Um, especially like since I'm working with these courses and memberships and such, um, that's been really my big uh, way of niching, but I'm still providing those other services. And it's almost like I'm providing the whole um, allotment to everybody is like, you know, I can do this and we can promote it this way. So it's the whole, whole package pretty much. That's amazing. And so, so you, when you first launched, you were a dream virtual assistant, which is kind of applicable to any business in the world, right? But then mm -hmm. you, you renamed it and you brought your your brand down to a niche. So so are you now working primarily with equine businesses or do you still do work for people that are, are not in the horse business? Or So yeah, but about I'd say 90% of my clients are equine business. Um, sometimes I get referred from some of my equine clients to like their friends or such that have a business that they need help with this. And then I kind of help them with, and they're usually just little projects, but, um, and then since I, I like access Ally so much, I'm in their Facebook group a lot and I'm answering questions and then someone's like, Hey, can you help me with my membership? So then I get hired for a project or two here and there. And usually they're not equally related, but they're into the membership stuff. And I understand that pretty well. So then I jump in and help them. That's great. So you're just, you're just in places where people need help and they, and they find you and, and you're getting referrals. That means you're doing great work, you know, and people only refer people that are, you know, doing great work. So congratulations. Yeah. That's like Thank really you. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, you know, we, I want to talk a little bit about the process of rebranding too. Did you face any hurdles when you were, you know, changing your brand or, or did you do it early enough? I, I think this is an important conversation because when people launch businesses, you know, often they have to rebrand because they realize they, they, you know, didn't name it appropriately. Like, what what hurdles did you face rebranding and you know what what would you say to someone that's like looking at creating a business and and how they should name it yes yeah, so i went through rebranding for myself and actually for a client too but my rebranding um i was only in business for about a year um before i changed it so it didn't really impact me too much i don't think and um the biggest thing is i think me changing over to one that fit my audience more was just super helpful um, and I made it the transition as easy as possible from like, you know, changing my domain and changing my email so that a lot of people wouldn't actually see 
the messiness in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just try to change everything. So that way it was automated or forwarded almost like, you know, your mailbox is forwarded to your new address or such something so that everything was leading to the new business. Um, I think the messiest part was just all the background stuff, like having to change my email for all my systems and such for my new business and Mm -hmm. business name and such. But for my client, she had, a more of a history she had owned the business for a few years and um but she noticed that the way she was marketing and such it just didn't re- uh resonate with the name so it was actually a good thing for her to switch and she actually has way more um reach and she's her google analytics are so much better because she's using those keywords now in her name and uh so we've, that was a couple months ago and she's already seeing a huge change and she does retreats. So people have already signed up for her retreats just based off her website, not even us doing any advertisement on Facebook or any of that so much. So it's, it just really depends on, you know, are you feeling like you're reaching the audience that your you know, your name is for, um, if you're just using your name, then, you know, that's not so much like, um, but if, like I know there is one lady that um, she did media stuff and she was using her name, but then she switched over to one name that actually fit to her clientele. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of having to look back and seeing, are you reaching the right people with what your name is? That's right. Yeah. And, and for authors that are listening here, I, uh, the recommendation is always to have your website be your author name, um, mm-hmm. you know, because, because people are searching for you as the author right. of the book and that's the best way for them to find you. Um, but for other, you know, equine businesses, you know, you need to make, you need to make sure you're securing a name that speaks to the people. That's where people like April can be very helpful for you or April herself can be very helpful for you because before you even go to launch a business or, or your website, you, because your website name will flow to all your social media channels too. So if you pick the wrong one, you're going to have to change everything that you've created in the, in the virtual space. So that's why consulting with someone like April and her business make it rain is a great resource before you even so if there's aspiring authors on here before you even get kicked out kicked off you might want to have a conversation with someone that has experience in this so they can help you with your SEO which you know what are your keywords um you know what what are your name choices and maybe brainstorm some some name choices you know before you go and you take take those names and you you buy your domain and and you you know do all these things you know talk with someone and they can offer you insight on on how to best make your decisions right would you agree with that april oh yeah definitely yeah because like even with that domain that you're talking is always have it in your name as an author which i completely agree you can also even have own you know the domain of your book and you have it forwarded to your name so that way if they happen to type in your name then you have that quick that way or they happen to type in the book name then they have it right to you anyways so <laughs> and that's awesome advice that's exactly what i do so i i own the in the reins domain i own carly cade domain and then my business is under carly cade creative you know uh mm-hmm. so they but they all forward to carly cade creative mm-hmm. so if you look for any of those things it sends you to my website which is great advice see this is why april is so brilliant um because she these are the sort of things that she can uh coach you towards so you can have a successful business too um i wanted to talk to you too so you know this is a pretty broad question but um you know since we're on the equestrian author spotlight you know what what would you say or what would you recommend to authors who want to market their books like what is one you know, cause there's so many things we can do, right? What is, what is one thing that you think would be a really useful marketing resource for authors trying to get the word out about their books? Yeah. So I think the way you do a lot of things is amazing. Like you're on YouTube, you're on, I know it's like, how do you get on all these places, but you're everywhere, which is great. <laughs> but if you had to pick one place first, because I know if you're not, you know, if people that don't self publish, they go on all these book tours and you're like, I can't do that with self publishing and I don't want to do that. So, but you have to think, how do I do that remotely? Mm. So I reach out to all these maybe bloggers, maybe podcasters, even YouTubers, like just get your face out there as much as possible. Get the book out there as much as possible. And, you know, the bloggers could give you reviews. They could, you know, do an interview with you either way. When this is making, uh, and if they link back to your website, it's making your website an authority. Um, and it's, that's what Google loves with SEO. It's like, oh yeah, you've been linked everywhere. And then another, it's like, now it's putting your name out there, especially if they've got 
you know, great followers. And um, if they're linking all their blogs and Pinterest, now that now they might be on all these other social medias themselves. So now your book's getting everywhere and you just had an interview or you got a review. <laughs> so it's those little things. It's just making those connections and reaching out to people, I think is the biggest step you could take when you, um, when you first have a book out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. I was also, I came up with a, well, it was like an idea I had thought about and like, um, if you have a book or such and you maybe you're still writing a book and just have like a fun thing in there that says, you know, when you're reading this book, have a hat, you know, use this hashtag and you know, you might be shared or I want to know what you're reading, what you're thinking, you know, just to kind of promote it in that way. Um, and maybe you, cause the biggest thing you want, you know, we have all these social media platforms mm -hmm. and, um, but they could disappear tomorrow. Like, um, uh, what was it that uh, Vine, you know, it was gone and overnight. It's like, where did Vine go? Mm -hmm. so it's just important to know those could go away any time, but your email list is the biggest thing. And it's like, how do you have an email list with a book? Especially if maybe if you are writing uh, fiction. Um, so my idea was that maybe you have a character that you know more of their history that you want to know more about this uh, character. So maybe you have a link in the book somewhere. Like if you want to know more about this character, you know, go here, sign up for the email, and then you can get this whole, you know, backdrop of this character. So that's just a fun way to, you know, interact with your readers. And now you have, you're starting to grow your email list. I mean, there's other ways too. Like if you have, like you're writing a book about disciplines or exercises, you can, um, get it where you know it's like if you want this exclusive exercise you can go and sign up for my email list so and even like maybe if you're going to have like if you have a book series and then now you have everybody on your email list and like hey guess what book just came out you know and mm -hmm. or keep them up with maybe you're giving them updates like hey i'm working on my next book just kind of like hey you know i'm still here like i'm still working on books and i just want to connect with you so I think email lists are important because you own your email list mm -hmm. that won't ever go away unless you accidentally delete it, but it's never going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that's excellent advice. So what I, what I really heard you say there is, uh, you know, as you know, in, in reach out to influencers, right. When you're, when you're beginning and, and you can reach out to influencers before you even have your book written. Right. Remember that building relationships with people online. I mean, we're all here to support and help each other, but it takes time. It's a long game. Mm -hmm. So you can't just fire something at someone and expect that they're going to write right. an article about you or interview you. You have to be thoughtful about how you do approach influencers, you know, so get to know about them, you know, watch some of their, listen to some of their podcasts, um, look at their websites, know what they stand for, make sure that what, what they talk about and what they are sharing with their brand aligns with the story you're trying to tell in your book, you know, so it's, so you can start building relationships on social media platforms and, and look and building relationships with influencers by reading mm -hmm. their blogs, coming on their blogs before you even have a book to launch. So, so that's something you can start right away as an right. aspiring author, like let people know who you are in the community that you're writing for. And then the second tip I heard you say is uh, email lists. And I would agree with you hundred percent build build your email list. And that was something I didn't do right out of the gate. I took some courses later on because I didn't know how to do that. It taught me how to do that. And that is an important resource because what you're saying is so true. Like any of the social media platforms we're using today can disappear tomorrow. Businesses go out of business all the time, right? So you want to own the relationship that you have with your readers and, and email them stuff that that is valuable and interesting. And like you said, like think of creative ways to offer them more content that they might be interested in after reading your book. So awesome recommendations. Thank you so much, April. And there's probably so many more things that you could coach us on doing, but those are two <laughs> really, really cool yeah. recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious, is there anything that listeners would be surprised to learn about you? Do you have any hidden talents or do you know how to do like a flying jump kick into a reverse back, <laughs> back flip or anything like that? <laughs> um, no, um, no, not even, I, I used to bowl a lot, so I know that's a weird thing, but I used to do bowling a lot and I actually went to Australia and New Zealand in Fiji when I was in eighth grade to go bowl all across the country with a program and I actually won a medal. It was like the Olympics for kids and bowling while wow. we were in New Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So you went to like 
Australia and Fiji and New Zealand to bowl like that is yeah so I, yeah we didn't bowl in Fiji but we bowled in Australia for like fun and connecting with the Australians and then we went to New, New Zealand um, for week two and then we just had a big competition against all these New Zealanders and um, you had like your team and then you had doubles and then you had singles and I, I was with a double and we actually won our competition in our age group and such that's awesome. So can you fl- can you throw like a hook ball? Like those are hard to do. Are, yeah. You must be a good. Yeah. yeah, I'm not like a huge where they like really crank it and it goes back and forth, but I can get it where I have a curve to it. So that's awesome. That is definitely a surprise. So you're, in a, you're a bowling equestrian. I love it. At first yeah. of all, you said you rode bowls and I was like, bowls? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because uh, my husband had a, his unit had like a little get together and it was just like a week or so ago and I'd haven't bowled in like a year. So I went and got my ball out because I do not like to use the lane balls after oh, I've no. used them so much and I have like my certain fingertips and I know everyone thinks I'm crazy but I'm not gonna bowl without that (laughs) and so I you know the first couple of frames I'm just like throwing crap balls but I was like I just had to warm up and then so everyone's like okay whatever you don't know how to bowl really but then by the end of the game I had spanked everybody so (laughs) way to go virtual high five (laughs) so uh well but there's like a really cool like little lesson in there is that um everything is better with consistency, right? So you hadn't mm-hmm. bowled in, in like a year and it took a minute for you to get your, your groove back. And it's the same thing for authors who are writing books. You know, it's like, if you touch it every day, if you work on it every day, if you don't, you know, give it too long to breathe in between sessions, the writing comes easier, right? And it was the same for you with bowling. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like the game isn't over till it's over. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this has been such a fascinating interview. I'm curious, uh, what makes you feel inspired or like your best self? So what is great is that I'm doing something that I really enjoy doing. I love seeing my clients be successful and I love seeing that it's helping the equine industry ultimately, which is what I love so much. I love the horses. I love horse people. So that's just what really motivates me is knowing that I'm helping out that industry. You're making a difference in the world and you're making a difference in people's lives and you're helping people not have to be chained to a desk in a, inside a corporation working for someone else. You're helping people make money for themselves. And I think that is a beautiful gift. So that should absolutely make you feel good. <laughs> Thank you. For you. And then, you know, I'm curious what, um, I'm curious about so much. What what has been the the hardest part about running a business and being an entrepreneur? And then on the flip side of that, what is what's been the best part for you? So the hardest part is probably just making sure I've got all the clients clients work done and such on certain tasks. But with Trello, that makes it a lot easier. So I've had to create theme days, like if I'm going to be working on my business versus the client's business. So I'll have maybe Monday, Wednesday where I work on the client stuff and then Fridays I'm working all on mine. Mm-hmm. So that's been the hardest part is, you know, prioritizing that. And uh, since I'm overseas, um, it makes it a little difficult with um, timing things and such. And um, But now I've gotten to the routine where I just kind of stay up a little late and then I sleep I s- all the way to when my daughter wakes up. So <laughs> I don't get up early or anything, but I just probably stay up way too late working but it works out and I'm enjoying it so it's okay that makes a lot of sense and theming things makes a lot of sense too that way you're you know because you're that way you're you're able to stay focused rather than like going all over the place you know theming things working Mm -hmm. on your business one day working on other people's businesses another day that makes a lot of sense that's great advice and then um the best thing best part so um, kind of like what makes me happy is just, you know, being in the industry, like I've talked about, is just like I completely love what I'm doing and I love the horses, um, but I also get to stay home with my daughter mm. and I get to see her grow up. Um, so that's been really rewarding. Um, I know that everyone's so fortunate for that and still being able to work. Um, usually it's kind of one or the other and I'm kind of getting to do both. I mean, she still goes to the babysitter a little bit, um, sometimes just because I need the days. <laughs> for sure. But, um, but yeah, that's been probably the best thing. And um, it's just because I'm trying to, and I want her to know she can go after her dreams. I actually have a really good uh, Brene Brown quote now that uh, she just says, be the adult you want your child to be. So that's what I always try to remind myself every day is like, I want it, this is, I'm trying to be a good person because I want her to be a good person too. So she needs to lead by example. So 
Oh, so I love you. that. And what a great role, mo role model you already are for your daughter. I mean, you're Thank a you. strong, powerful woman making her way in the world the way she wants to. And I, I really, I love that quote, you know, be the adult that you want your child to be. That is excellent advice. And I will link yeah. to some of Brene Brown's books in the show notes too, so you can check mm -hmm. them out because they're fantastic reads. I've gotten so much yeah. value from reading mm -hmm. her books. Uh, and well, you, you know, just like me being curious, I'm curious about what you're curious about right now. What's, what's, what's up for you? What's next? I mean, you're already exploring so much, but you know, what are you curious about exploring now? Yeah. So I'm always just trying to see what's the next big thing for the equine businesses or what are they not doing right now that they could be really utilizing? Um, I know that there's so many platforms going on. Like, what do I do? Like, and, you know, some of them are just like, well, there's no more organic traffic. I can't really get anybody. But the biggest platform right now to be on if you want organic traffic is LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm kind of been curious about. And it's like updating my profile, um, you know, just filling it out completely that really fits me and, you know, reaching out to a lot of people. I've even started a group on LinkedIn um, and just, you know, trying to get out there as well. And I'm posting some of the stuff that I have, and, which would just be great for authors too, is if you, if you have little blurbs or whatever, you know, posts or something, that would be just a great way to connect to. Um, so there's some organic traffic for sure is where the LinkedIn is. Like I had some posts pop up on my feed that were like from three weeks ago. I'm like, that's crazy that, you know, that feed is still coming through. Mm -hmm. So that's how organic LinkedIn is still. Mm -hmm. And I do, I do, I do think you're correct there that LinkedIn is kind of an untapped resource mm -hmm. right now for, uh, particularly the, the horse business. I, I don't think a lot of us are using uh, LinkedIn to its fullest. So I think that that's really great that you're exploring that. I think there's a lot of opportunity there and I'm sure you'll be sharing about that in your, your group. And, mm -hmm. and, and speaking of your group, how do, how do people join? Can they just request to join or do they have to do something special? Like, yeah, they just can request to join. Um, there's a couple questions and then um, it just has little rules, but nothing too big and it's just a free group. Um, the uh, Grow Your Herd is just a free group right now. So anybody can come in and join us. It's so cool. So authors, join April in her Make uh, Grow Your Herd Facebook group because it's a great place to learn and network and meet other people and jump in on those uh, monthly working sessions, which sound yes. really fun. And then, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of the interview here. So I wanted to, to ask you, is there anything I should have asked you, but I didn't? <laughs> anything else you want to want to share about no I think what I had said was just like rain your herd podcast but we talked about that and we talked about the Facebook group uh, I know what I'm um, going to be coming out in the future uh, in March is some Facebook ad mini course which would be really beneficial for some authors um, because just another way for you know to get reach so many people like if you do have that email list you could use that as an audience as a lookalike audience and mm -hmm. I can show you all how to do that and make it a lot easier and teach you all these different techniques like you don't have to have tons of money going into Facebook ads at first and there's like different techniques where once you earn so much money with Facebook ad then you put that back into the ad and then it's kind of like a waterfall technique so I love that. And yeah, I know that that ads and where to put your money and, and how to use ads to to the to your best is is a challenging subject. I mean, I've tried Facebook ads a few times and had success. But you know, it's like, is this really worth it for me to spend money right. on? So that's where your course would be really mm -hmm. helpful for authors to learn because you know, you, you've taken the time to actually dissect what mm -hmm. works and what doesn't, you know, cause I would rather be writing than trying to figure out how to do Facebook yeah. ads. So that, that's yeah. where you are a valuable resource for authors and other small businesses and big businesses and anybody who's interested in forces as a business. So thank you, April, so much for your time today. Yes, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh man, it's been blast. such a cool conversation. I feel like the time just flew by. Can yeah. you tell people where they can find you and your business online? Yes. So uh, all the platforms that I've talked about, I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, my website is just make it rain .com. Um, Pretty much if you type that in anywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, you'll find me make it rain. Um, and I have my Facebook group, grow your herd. Um, but yeah, I think that's everywhere I'm at. And, and you, oh, you have the podcast too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> where's the, where's the podcast available? Because there's lots yes, of so the podcasts. Podcast. Um, is uh, we are using Anchor right now as our way to reach out to a lot of other websites around Anchor and Apple 
podcast, all the fun players, Google and all them. And then I also just built our website. So now all our podcasts are up on the website and uh, we have our videos or we're on YouTube too. Right now it's just the audio, but hopefully eventually they'll have the video up there too. Um, but yeah, so all, all the um, podcasts are being transcribed. So they'll look like blog posts so that if you're a reader and you just want to get a quick thing, um, we're doing that because it's really great for SEO too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. You're so smart. And that's, <laughs> and that's true though. People do consume content in different ways. And so it's, it's the same with, with authors, right? We have audiobooks, we have ebooks, we have paperback, um, you know, and, and, and people like to consume their media in very different ways. So it's good to have all those different things available. That's why the show is uh, audio only and also on YouTube, because I know that some people are visual and they like to watch people being interviewed or see who who's being interviewed and see the mannerisms. And, and I think that's cool that you're going to do that with your podcast too. And stay tuned. April has so graciously invited me to be on uh, the make it rain podcast. So yes. I will be on the show here shortly and I'll share that with listeners as well. And just so everyone's clear, if the horse people know this, but for anyone non-horsey listening to the podcast, make it rain. It's rain as in rains, R-E-I-N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to make sure that people knew that. So April, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I know that you and I are going to be in touch and I'd love to have you back on the show as a guest once, thing, you, know, once you have some more developments so we can talk about more and maybe we can get more specialized and talk about one particular subject. You know, Maybe when that Facebook ads course is available, we can have another yeah. conversation about about how authors can utilize Facebook ads. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and authors, don't forget, virtual assistants, very, very helpful. And um, April, thank you for your time today. I hope you have a yeah. great day. Yes, thank you. Thanks for joining us this week on the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. I hope you enjoy these Q and A sessions with wonderful equine authors who love all things horses and writing, just like me. Visit my website, carlycadecreative.com, where you can read the show notes and make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you so much for your support. Want a free guide to secrets of horse book authors? Gallop over to carlycadecreative.com forward slash wisdom to have author advice delivered instantly to your inbox. If you are an author, who writes about horses and would like to be spotlighted, please let me know. Visit my contact page at carlycadecreative.com to fill out a request. I'd be happy to have you on the show too. Thank you for tuning in to the Equestrian Author Spotlight Podcast. See you next time. I'm your host, Carly Cade. Creative writing makes my spurs jingle. <laughs>